for each of you. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen, amen. It's been a month since we have been inside of these four walls, and we ought to give God the glory and the praise and say thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come back into this house of worship. Amen, amen. I know it's a great disappointment that uh, we were not able to be in house for the 120th church anniversary. I was greatly disappointed. But we are back inside a renovated uh, sanctuary. I know we still have a few items that we want to address, but the roof is repaired. We have new lighting. We have fresh paint. We have new doors. And although we do have an issue with the doors, we're going to acknowledge that right now. They have to. We have to get the contractor back on that. But isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Trustee Wooten this morning, I said, you got enough light over here. <laughs> Amen. The lighting has improved. Amen. And again, I told them uh, during the business meeting, I said, I apologize to Trustee Wooten. Because she used to be on this side of the church teaching Sunday school. I moved her to the left-hand side of the church. And that's where the that's where the danger zone was. I didn't know it did at that point in time. But when we took the roof off, we saw what? what we really have. Yeah. But praise God. Thank you, God. Praise God. Thank you. He's worthy of all Amen. praise. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move forward. We're going to uh, have our announcements uh, by Sister Janice Bailey. And then uh, uh, we're going to have the welcome by uh, Brother Nicholas Cobb. Amen. 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 Sister Bailey will talk. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Long time no see. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior for allowing us to be back into this wonderful house one more time. And I pray that he enters here and never leaves. Yeah. Um, so I come to you to present the announcements. Um, is there anything from the floor that's not on the program already as we speak? Okay, so basically the announcements are the upcoming events. Let's focus on that. Um, anyone turning the age of 65, um, new members orientation, um, just pray for the sick and shut in, and then just look at the worship services and times. Bible study is still going strong, a mission circle on Wednesday night. So let's all join in and praise God today. Let us know so that we can 
this would be a uh, 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 memento from uh, the pre-dated renovation here. It has AM, ACMBC, Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, with a cross and 1903 to 2003. Thank you. 2003. I think it's a young. It's a blessing that we live that long. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. This morning, because we have, we are entering into uh, a renovated sanctuary, uh, it's very befitting that we recognize that we are coming in. And I'm going to ask that the that the deacons and uh, the, the mothers who are uh, able and willing, uh, the trustees who are able and willing to please assemble right at the back in the foyer. And we are going to march into this sanctuary this morning. And didn't you notice that foyer when you came in this morning? Did not it look good? Amen, amen. God did. Doing great and wonderful things this morning. And I think it's very fitting that we come into the sanctuary. And when you march in, we ask that you would assemble around this altar. And we are going to do a litany of church renovation. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Require a special selection. If you will do, we'll come this far. By faith. Amen. And you come this far by faith. Amen. Now those of you, come on officers, let us join in. Let us join in. If you're willing and able, we want to thank God for what he has done.
copy of this link. But uh, together, I will walk you through it. I will read, and then we will offer something together. With praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to God, who accomplished all things, eternal God and creator of all things. We give you the highest praise for the good work you do among us. Let us say praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. For our baptism of faith in faith, for your forgiveness of our sins, for the renovations of Anderson Chapel Church, and for the sustaining it by your gracious hand. Repeat, we offer our heartfelt thanks. We oh Lord. offer our heartfelt thanks, oh Lord. thanks oh Lord. Oh Lord. for the unity of the Holy Spirit, for the love and grace of Jesus our Lord, which gives us our mission to love God and the people, and, and love God and love people with all that we are. We offer our heartfelt thanks, O oh Lord. We offer our heartfelt thanks, O oh Lord. For those who inspire with this vision, for those who help bring it about with their knowledge and gifts, and those who contribute their sweat and labor and finances, we offer our heartfelt thanks, O oh Lord. We offer our heartfelt thanks, O oh Lord. For the worship of God, for the sharing of the good news of God's love in Jesus, for the transforming of all people through hope, for the blessed table of Jesus where all are welcome, for the nurturing of persons of all ages, and for the furthering of the kingdom, we dedicate this building. Amen. We dedicate Amen. this building. For the welcoming and blessing of all people, we do live together for the sacrifice of home and family life, for the comfort of those who grieve, for strength for those who are undergoing trials, for counsel, encouragement, and nurturing to this community. We dedicate this building. We dedicate this building. For the cultivating of love towards all people, for the essential unity and partnership with all believers, for fostering good citizenship, for resisting evil, for promoting virtue and justice in public life, for missionary endeavors, endeavors at home and abroad, for transforming and discipleship unto the kingdom of his world, of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord. We dedicate this building. We build this building. Inspire each of us by the big vision for the mission in the place to help to renovate of this church. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Inspire each of us by your continuing presence in our <coughs> lives and kindle a flame in our heart through Jesus. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Empower us to reach out to the poor and needy, the sick and the dying, who so need the good news of your love. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Use us as a living example of the Jesus in the world, bringing forth good fruit that your kingdom would come in this place. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Use us to proclaim your holy name and to touch people's lives through our example and faith with the life-giving gospel of Jesus Christ. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Holy God, create a Lord. You bless us in so many ways with your gift. And in this particular, you bless us with the gift of this new renovated house to pray and study. As we come and go forth from this place, 
May we know that your presence always find consolation in our weary heart. And be empowered by your holy word and sacrament to go forth to serve you in the world that your name might be glorified and your kingdom increased through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless you. We are so delighted that God has blessed us with another opportunity. I'm thankful this morning because it could have been the other way, but God has blessed us. And uh, this morning we are coming here to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If no one else does it, you ought to be able to do it because he woke you up this morning. Yes. 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 Blood for a warm in your body because it could have been the other way. Yes. Yes. Sister, trustee wouldn't say it this morning. It seemed like every time you talk to somebody, you got to talk about somebody that has died. But I come to tell you this morning that Jesus is alive and well. Yes. Yes. And we're going to worship and praise him this morning. Yes. We're going to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yes. And this choir has assembled this morning. And they have come this morning and to give us our opening the selection. We have already asked you to stand for the for the instruments. So we're gonna ask you, we're gonna let you keep your seat there right now. We're gonna let you keep your seat in the choir gonna give us a selection of instruments. Amen.
how do you make songs for religion as well?
knows that I'm coming in and those are already here. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have our birthday re recognition by my wife, Mother Lewis. She will come, and following that, we will come back uh, just before our worship is given. Struggling, she had been through, um, and had a stroke about a year ago, so but she's doing good. Oh, But uh, my good friend and cousin and sister, Margaret Knight, birthday was the 11th, was, uh, what was it, the 17th, and I just want to uh, recognize Amen. her, because I'm Amen. doing this video in remembrance of her, Amen. and I wish she was here today to see the renovation. Amen. that 
my wife and I would contribute uh, some of $1,000 to the church building fund renovation. And we are here today. Uh, uh, Big and I, this is uh, made out to Anderson Chapel now. <laughs> and likewise, uh, our son, uh, Malik Lewis, and his wife, uh, Amber, uh, they uh, also uh, contributed $100 to the building fund. And we want to make sure that that is done in a clear house. Uh, I know that there was others who was, uh, uh, who was intended to make their announcement on the first Sunday. But you did, we did not get an opportunity. If you want, if you want to uh, do the clearinghouse business now, we can go ahead and do it now. Good morning, each and every one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On the behalf, I, I know I'm going to change your brother. Uh, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to call. Oh, and my cousin. I'm not going to call all of them. I will. Our family, um, a lot of them are We're all the donors. Uh, it's one thousand and twenty-eight dollars. And I stand to announce that um, my husband and myself will be donating two hundred fifty dollars. Amen. Amen. And I have five hundred dollars for my children and grandchildren. Amen. Amen. I just want to stand and say that on the first Sunday that I have uh, people say, uh, say they would donate to me, but I bring in first Sunday, and I know the good Lord said we have, I have something like a thousand dollars. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And we thank you for those of you that have suspicion. And we do have some other donations from um, folks that would like to remain anonymous. Of course, the single family donated, uh, Pastor Lewis and family donated one, and the others were donated by anonymous donors. We had um, some other pledge donations that will be coming in shortly. And the renovation of $3,500 for the foyer was donated by anonymous donors. of you that have given and uh, again as you say you notice that the foyer was donated out there and how it looks so wonderful and uh, I do have to say one thing many of you did not did not know but on a day like today when that car uh, uh, sitting right there in front of the uh, door right there the sun hits it and it or the quiet and the sunlight would beam back this direction but those that frosted looking glass up there has shielded that out. Amen. It makes it so much good, and we thank God for that. And we just want to let you know that we appreciate what you have done. And if you look around, you see what has been done, and you will see what still needs yet to be done. And uh, one of the next things, I just say it right now for every, everybody that's listening. Uh, we do want to upgrade the carpet, and we do want to do those front restrooms out there. So continue, yeah. and you see that work is being progressive, and it's not that we've been sitting still. We are, it, it, it looks wonderful, it looks wonderful to me, and I pray that it looks wonderful to you. And amen, amen. Uh, worship and give us in the hand of uh, Trustee Wick.
feel that embrace of that love. As the choir shall give us a selection.
So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come right now as humble as we know how. Father, it has nothing to do with the miracle, dear Lord, but all to do with you. Father, I ask you, dear Lord, just to give me the words right now. Father God, as we lift up this prayer to you, Father, first we come to say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for waking us this morning and starting us on our way. Father, we thank you for clothing us in our right mind. For Lord, some of us, dear Lord, our mind wandered away. Father, truth be known, dear Lord, even in the midst of this sanctuary, Father God, Satan has tried to touch some of our minds and tell us, dear Lord, Father God, that they haven't done anything. Some are saying that, that he can't preach. Some are saying they can't pray. They can't sing. They can't teach. But Father God, I know that in your word you said that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So Father, I come this morning to lift up my breath and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I give you the glory. Give you the honor. Give you the praise. Father, I acknowledge that I'm weak, but thou art mighty. And Father God, the first we need to do is know I'm sick. Father God, boy, if we don't know ourselves, how can we help somebody else? If we can't ask the Lord to fix me, Lord, dear Lord, how can we help someone else to fix themselves? Father God, so I come acknowledging then, Lord, that I'm a sinner saved by grace. And Father God, I know that same grace is available to all your children. So Lord, right now, dear Lord, around this altar, dear Lord, as we look around this altar, dear Lord, we say, Father God, just have your hand. The choir is saying, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yes. Father God, a sanctuary, dear Lord, where you abide, dear Lord. Yes. Father God, if you are abiding in this sanctuary, dear Lord, Father God, there's going to be something different in this sanctuary. Yes. There's going to be something that radiates, dear Lord. Yes. Something, dear Lord, that tells me and women there's something different, dear Lord. Yes. But Father God, we cannot come into the midst of the presence of God, dear Lord, and leave the sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So we just thank you right now. Thank you. Father God, not only for these that have assembled around this altar, but Father God, those that are in the pews right now. Father God, some have dealt with this. Some have dealt with that. And Father, I just want to say thank you on a personal note. Father God, for just touching my door. Father God, for she spent the afternoon and the evening and the night in the hospital. Father God, and her children, dear Lord. Father God, were at home, dear Lord. The doctors wanted to keep them. But Father, she had to take care of her children. But Father God, I just thank you, dear Lord. Father God, for even when, dear Lord, we won't do right, dear Lord, you'll look beyond all our thoughts and you'll see our very needs. Father God, and right now, dear Lord, before her, you and this body, dear Lord, Father God, I remind her and all your children, dear Lord, in order for us to take care of our loved ones, we got to take care of ourselves first. Or if we don't take care of ourselves, we won't be there to take care of our love. So, Lord, right now, dear Lord, I thank you for being a doctor in the sick room. Thank you, Lord, for being a lawyer in the courtroom. Thank you, dear Lord, for being a husband to the husbandless. Thank you for being a wife to the wife. Thank you for being a father to the fatherless. Thank you for being a mother to the motherless. Thank you for being a friend to the friendless. Thank you, Lord, for being all that we need. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you have allowed Anderson Chapel to do. Father God, that we may come into this sanctuary. Father God, knowing that the roof has been repaired. Thank you, Lord, knowing, dear Lord, that the shrimps has been replaced. Paint has gone up. The building is being renovated. Now, Lord, the physical building has been renovated. Father, now, Lord, we just ask the Lord that you'll help us renovate our spiritual needs. Yeah. 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 Father God, because, dear Lord, there is a word, dear Lord. Yeah. There is a word yeah. that if we use in our lives, mm -hmm. 
Father God, we'll find us drawing closer yes, to you. Yes. And that word is love. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. So Lord, prepare us right now. Yes. Trim us to the Lord. Circumcise our hearts. Yes, Lord, that we will be who you will have us to be. Father, for we need to realize that when men and women talk about us and we're doing the best that we can, it's not us that they are rebuking. They are rebuking the work that you are doing. Father God, if we must just hold on and say, Lord, Father, show us the way. For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But by your grace and your mercy that we are here. So, Father, I just want to thank you again for your great work. Now, Lord, touch these again. Those that have been anointed. Father God, that that anointment ran from the crown of their heads to the whole soul of the world. Father God, that someone would say, Lord, what more without Adam to do? For we are your sons and we desire to do your will. And we just give you the glory. The honor and the praise for what you have, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen.
leaning and depending on us. So we thank you, God, for his grace and mercy this morning. Thank you for all that he has done, what he has brought us through, and what he's brought us from. God has been so marvelous, marvelous to us. Amen. God bless you. But God has been good to me. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, we say God has been good to us, but somebody sometimes you don't believe it, you don't understand. You don't know, you don't think so. So Olivia tell you right now. She said, Good morning. They said, What's good about it? Wait, they okay, what's good about it? What's that mother? Wait, they understand. No, God's still good to us. God's good, that's right. That's right. Whether you understand it or not, God is good. It was God that woke you up this morning. That alarm clock aggravated me this morning, but it didn't wake me up. It just alerted me that there was a time to get up. But God woke me up. How do I know I can confirm that? Because before the alarm clock went off, I woke up. And somebody alarm clock is still going off, but it can't move. God's grace. God's grace. We thank God for all that he has done. And those of you with your Bibles, the book of Colossians, the book of Colossians. And we want to, uh, we want to look at uh, the fourth chapter. And we are going to start, we're going to read verses 2, 3, and 4. Uh, verses 2, 3, and 4. Just for, just for completeness, a little bit of maybe five or six. You may not get into that, but maybe two, three, four, five or six. Colossians 4. And the scripture reading is thus from the King James. You may be reading from a different translation. But it says, continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for all, that God will open unto you, unto us, a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We try to follow we come again to say thank you. Father, as we assemble here in the house of worship, we thank you, Lord, for another day. Now, Lord, as we stand behind this desk, we acknowledge that we are not able to ourselves. But, Father, we ask that I was saying to preach it, Lord. Use my, my, my tongue to preach your word. Use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let the same spirit of Bible teach your children, the Lord. That they may receive your word this morning, the Lord, and apply it to their hearts. This we do pray and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The second verse there says to continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. And I want to say to you this morning that this Thanksgiving needs a little prayer. Yeah. This Thanksgiving needs a little prayer. 
What do you mean? Are you sure your Thanksgiving needs a little prayer? Well, man's version of Thanksgiving is that we come together, we put out the turkey spread, we have the stuffing, we have the yams, we have the beets, and somebody may not like those beets. I'm a big fan of myself. But we have the food that's spread out. And it's good that family comes together. It's a wonderful time for family to come together. But when family comes together, it's also an opportune time for prayer. It's a time for prayer and thanksgiving. And even in the midst of our prayers, whenever we pray, we ought to always thank God for what he's done. Amen. We need prayer with our thanksgiving. Amen. And we need thanksgiving with our prayer. Amen. Prayer, thank, prayer always should be coupled with thanksgiving. Amen. Because when you fall down on your knees and pray, and our prayer is our commun communication and conversation with God, our opportunity to commune with God. But when you go to God, you ought not to just bow down all the time and say, Lord, I need this. Lord, I want that. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. But when you pray, <coughs> you ought to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. God has already done enough for us that if he never does anything else, he's done enough. When you think about where he's brought you from. When you think about what he's done for you. When you think back when you didn't have the food you wanted to eat. Some may not even have had the food on their table. Some just didn't have the food that they wanted to eat. But God has brought you through this. And God has brought you through that. Amen. You ought to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul here writes to the church at Corinth. And he reminds them to continue earnestly in prayer. See, Paul supported the Colossian church through his prayers for them. You know, I've given Deacon May a book, and I hope that he has passed it on to the other deacons and hope that it radiates through the church. The prayer of the book is praying for your pastor and the church. See, we ought to pray one for another. Paul supported the Colossian church through his prayers for them. He may not be able to be there with them in present at this time, but he supported them through their prayers. And we need to support one another. We need to encourage one another. Colossians 1, 3 through 8 says, We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praying always for you since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which ye have heard in the word of the truth of the gospel which is come to you as also all the world is bringing forth fruits. It is also among you since that day you have heard and knew the grace of God is true. As you have also learned from Ephraim, our dear fellow servant, who is a fellow faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who will also declare to you your love in the Spirit. So when we receive the Word of God, we need to act upon the word of God and we need to grow upon the word of God and we need to have the word as our foundation in all that we do. Amen. 
Paul encouraged them with the prayer and see their life and their ministry would continue to prosper through continued vigilance in prayer, including prayer on their problem. Amen. Now, if I'm praying for you, uh, Deacon May, you need to pray for yourself likewise. You know, it's, it's, it's not just a one way. It's not just one thing. We need to pray together. Amen. We need, there are those who may not know how to pray. There are those who, when we are in our quiet time at home, we are praying for our children because they may not know how to pray. But when we are in the household of faith, we come together. You ask me to pray for you. You ought to be able to pray likewise. We ought to be able to touch and agree, knowing that God will do marvelous things in our lives. Boy, because it's not about us individually, but it's all about the work of God. Vaughn said that the ancient Greek word translated continue is built on a root meaning to be strong. It always condemns earnest adherence to a personal thing. This nexus, passion, implies persistence and fear. We've got to be persistent. We've got to be persistent in our prayer. We can't just pray and just get lackadaisical. We've got to pray earnestly. We've got to pray sometime till the sweat comes off our head. We've got to let the Lord know that we mean what we are saying. Serious about it. Yes. Don't believe me? You think about the relationship in your life. They will tell you certain things that you want to know. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. You got to do something. Yes. You got to show some things to show that you are serious. Yes. Spurgeon says that this sort of earnest prayer is important, mm -hmm. but does not come easy. It's not an easy. Earnesty in prayer speaks of great effort. Steadily applied. Heaven's gate is not to be stormed by one weapon, but by many. Spare no arrows. Christians watch and see that none of the arms of the armory are rusty. We've got to stay. We've got to make sure that our armory is ready for war in any and every time. Because when we go before God, we've got to be ready to receive the throne of God with a hundred hands and look at a promise with a hundred eyes. You have a great work on your hand, on the hand, for you have to move the arms that move the world. The arm that moves the world is God, in case you don't know. Watch this for every meaning of moving that arm. See to it that you apply every promise, that you use every argument, that you wrestle with all might. This is one of the reasons why we need to read the word of God. Study the word of God. For in the word of God, the word of God teaches us how to pray. There are prayers in here that teaches us a model of prayer. We see how 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 the uh, how the prophets that came before God and prayed. We see how uh, Joshua himself prayed before God. We see how Moses prayed, and we need to know that we need to pray earnestly. Be vigilant. Be vigilant in our prayer. With thanksgiving. We are to be vigilant in prayer, but always praying with thanksgiving yes. for the great things that God has done. Yes. Can anybody think of a great thing that God has done this morning in your life? Can anybody think of something good that God has done? Can anybody think of something that it had not been for the Lord? Where were we be this morning? I just thought this morning, just when my eyes came open this morning, what a great thing that He did. Did I deserve it? No. But he did. What a great thing. Somebody thinks what a great thing God did when he gave me that new home. When he gave me that new car. When he gave me that bride. When he gave me that husband. Somebody think those are the great things that he did. But he woke me this morning. When I laid down in my sleeping couch last night. Didn't know whether I was right. 
What a great thing he did. But God has done something great for you right now. And young people, you need to know that God is still doing great things in your life. Five, six years old, he's doing great things. And you know, it's all for them to know that God is doing great things. We got to share the good news with them. Barclay on vigilance says literally the Greek words mean to be wakeful. The phrase could well mean that Paul is telling them not to go to sleep when they pray. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Amen. There's two types of sleep that we talk about here. There's a physical sleep yeah. Yeah. and there's a spiritual sleep. Yeah. The physical sleep uh, uh, Maria, I get I get down to that stuff time because you know I get up early in the morning and I try to pray, brother Dancy, early in the morning. And when I pray early in the morning, I'm bright and and, 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 and I'm focused. But late at night, when I go down and pray, I the weight of the world is upon my shoulder. I've been through a lot of things, brother Dennis, and it gets I get weak and weary, and my eyes want to go to sleep. And at that point in time, my, I use the prayer, and I'll go into the Lord's prayer, and I'll say, uh, "Our Father, which art in heaven," because I don't need to go to sleep right now. I need to be vigilant, so I stay with that prayer and let the Lord know I thank. You for the day, and then when I wake up on the next morning, Sister Jackson, I fall on my knees and I go into that earnest prayer, knowing that I'm focused. God wants us focused, so we need to be focused and not sleepy. Sometimes, because of our tiredness of our body, our mind, we struggle against sleep. When we pray, other times we pray as if we were asleep. And our prayers simply sound like and feel tired and sleepy. I've heard those prayers in the church. I've been asked to pray, so I'm just come up here and pray. And we're going to walk God along with her. God won't move because you are not moving. You got to be decent in your prayer. Prayer should be mingled with praise. I've heard that in New England, Persia says, after the Puritans the Puritans have sat up there a long while, they used to have very often a day of humiliation, humiliation, fasting, and prayer. Till they had so many days of fasting. So many days of humiliation, so many days of prayer, that at last a good senator proposed that they would change it once and have a day of thanksgiving. Thus brings us to our observance of thanksgiving. Because they were observing it so many times that it became just a routine to them. It didn't mean anything to them. They were just coming together. And many times we come together and we don't mean anything. We just do something because it's expected of what we are to do. But I want to let you know we not all not do what the world expects us to do. We ought to do what God has called us to do. And then that be we need to look at our Bible study and prayer meeting. And we need to come together and maybe once a month. Focus on nothing but prayer in the midst of our Bible study so that we can pray for, pray for our community. We need to be sincere and honest. So, while we're praying, Paul says, seems to say, as long as we are on the subject of prayer, please pray for us. But Paul didn't ask for the prayer for his personal needs, which were me, but that God will open to us a door for the word. And let me just pause. I know we have some personal situations in our life. I know we have some things that we need to address, the things that we need to attack. But when you pray, when you are asking God to heal my body, when you are asking God to heal my body, when you are asking God to restore my children, 
When you're asking God to restore your personal relationship, take a moment and ask God that he will open a door for you to share the word. Well, Pastor, I'm not a good talker. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. How can I share the word? Every one of us are missionaries. Every one of us are ambassadors for Christ. If you know enough to pray to God to ask him, you ought to know enough to tell somebody that he is God and he is good. See, because the reality of it is, to say many a times that you're ready to divide the one planet the seed, the other water, but God gives the increase. You don't know whether you are a seed planter. You don't know whether you are watering. And one thing about water, one thing about water, let me tell you something about water, uh, Deacon Ray. When you look at water, see, many people think that you got that, you, you, you've seen the water and the flowers when they got that, uh, so so many of that water pot out there, and you got those little sprinkles coming out, and that water pot is full. But guess what? In a drought, in a dry land, one drop of water makes a difference. And some of our people are in a drought. They are in a dry land, and we need to give one drop of water. If that's all you can do, is just tell them that God is good. When everybody else is cussing them out. I've taken on a little part-time job. Working myself into, into this retirement thing. Doing something that I want to I wanna do. And uh, it's, it's transportation for, for children. And the other day, the other day, uh, one, of the, one of the girls on the route, it was her birthday. I found out accidentally when I heard her talking in the back about it being the birthday. And I asked her what day was the birthday. My wife and I, we bought a card and we gave her a card and we gave her a bookmark and we put a poster up so that all the students on the bus could find that card so that she had to brighten their day. And guess what? I got a hug. But get this, it wasn't from the woman I gave the card to. It was from another. Why? Because somebody took the time to recognize their need. You don't know what anybody is going through at any point in time in their life. You don't know the situation that they are dealing with. You don't know. You know, a lot of times we like to walk up to somebody, pat them on the back, and say, how you doing? Please be careful with that because you don't know the back burning that thing. You don't know what's going on with them. You don't know whether their arm is hurting. But when you greet them, greet them with a smile. When you greet them, let them know that you care about them. When you greet them, let them know that God is with you. See, because when God opened this door and asked God, he would give you a word and he would speak. Open the door for the word that you speak as you ought to speak. Even though Paul was in shame for his faithfulness to the gospel, he knew that he ought to speak in a way that would make it manifest he knew, he knew that he had a mission. He knew that he had a calling. And Paul was clearly evident. Paul wanted prayer that he would continue to make the gospel clear and evident, even if it meant being in these shame. Church of a living God. I know many of us, are, we are in some type of chains of bondage right now. Financially, we are in some strength. Oh, we are looking at the government and all that they are doing. It seems like there are those who are trying to squash us down. And we are talking about all that's going on in the government. Yes, you must be physically aware. You must be aware of the government. You must be aware of the community. You must be aware of your enemy. But at the end of the day, when you come home, you ought to be able to fall down on your knees and say, Lord, I thank you for all that you have done. Lord, I thank you. They might talk about me, but Lord, I'm on my bending knees. I know that this old world is not my home. I'm looking forward to
Jesus to return and carry me on back. But while I'm here, I'm going to pray with thanksgiving. While I'm here, I'm going to walk with wisdom. While I'm here, I'm going to talk with wisdom. Redeem me the time that I may speak to my brother or my sister. In grace, you might talk about me, but I'm going to let you know that God loves me and he loves you also. You may talk about me, but I'm going to let you know that God is on my side. I haven't always been like this. I'm not as strong as I would like to be. I'm not where God would have me to be. But thank God, I'm climbing Jacob's ladder. Every round goes a little higher and higher. I'm walking on the shoulders of those four first that went before me. But most of all, I'm walking on Jesus' blood-stained cross. For there one day, Jesus hey, that Jesus was proclaiming the gospel of him, of the, his father. He was telling of the good news. He was telling how for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Those Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't want to hear it. Oh, even the Jews themselves, they didn't want to hear it. But Jesus told them, I am the Son of God. Jesus told them, I am he who will destroy this temple and in three days build it back up. Church of the living God, they didn't understand, but they took him and they crucified him before an unjustice court. They took him and whipped him all night long. They commanded him, march up Golgotha Hill. They nailed him to a cross. They sped upon him, crowned on his head, speared him in his side. They mocked him. They criticized him. But Jesus never said a mumbling word. Though they did two thieves hanging beside him, one on the right hand side. And one on the left hand side, one said, if thou be the son of God, why don't you come down off this cross and take us with you? But he, the other said, why don't you leave him alone? We are here because of our own sin and condemnation. And he said, Father, remember me when you enter into your father's kingdom. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. They, Jesus, they continued. The sun began to move in the sky. Jesus began to hang his head in the lust of his shoulder. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and he gave up the ghost. They buried him in Joseph's borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up, church of a living God, I know that love is supreme. Because he got up, I know his word is true. He said that I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there ye may be also. So I know that over there, over there, I shall be with Jesus, where the wicked shall cease from troubling, the weary shall be at rest. Goodbye, Anderson Chapel. I may never see you anymore, but I want to let you know I am a sinner saved by grace. I want to let you know that I'm praying always with thanksgiving. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. The songwriter said, oh, my brother, please pray for me. When you fall down on your knees, when you bow before the Lord, please pray for me. I'm so glad that mama prayed for me. I'm so glad that grandma prayed for me. And I thank God for every one of you that will pray for me. But most of all, I thank God for his son who died on the cross, who died on the cross and rose again on the third day and now sits on the right hand side of God the Father. And because he rose, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. The choir is going to give us a selection of that shit. And we do extend an invitation to you this morning. Prayer 
Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving day needs prayer. But when you pray, you got to have Thanksgiving in your heart. Oh, God has done so much for us. He's opened doors that no man can close. And close doors that no man can close. Let's just look around. Just look around at what God has done in here. There was a point where it just felt like nothing will ever happen. But God has moved. Why? Because somebody prayed with Thanksgiving. And the Lord said, what's in your hand? The bank said they couldn't work with you. But God said, what's in your hand? And when you use what's in your hand, God will do it. Somebody right now, you just need to stretch forth your hand and come to this altar. Lord, I need you. The choir is going to sing. Invitation to disciple children sustained. You may come and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. As you accept him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus said that if you shall believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, God shall be saved. Would you rise? You've been in the storm.
one portion in the service today, and I do want to acknowledge, I do not know who, but I just want to acknowledge and thank you for the lovely window decorations that you have. So to, to think the building this morning, give a special touch, and to the shell for the back, for all that you do. You know, there are so many things that we we can do together. Yeah. And I, was talking, I was talking with uh, uh, Pastor Lewis this morning, uh, my son, and we was uh, talking about some things of uh, a meeting. And, uh, I actually spoke to him yesterday, but I was here. And they was talking about how to improve in certain areas. And I told him, I said, I want to tell you, there's a four little word that solves it all. It's a powerful word. Love. I was even in the meeting, and he told me, he said, that's the same thing that someone said yesterday. But it's not the love of ourselves. It's the love of God. See, our problem is we have to love ourselves and not have the love of God. There's something about the love of God, Sister Glenn, that when we all come together, unity, unity. This is why the children of Bethel were able to work on that tower because they were unified. If we were just united, church posts. Anderson Chapel, mm -hmm. community, yes. missionary, holy, mm -hmm. Pentecost. Mm -hmm. If we will unite on the word of God, Amen. oh, what a wonderful world yes. this will be. Amen. But in the meantime, stay steadfast. Amen. Stay earnest in prayer with all thanksgiving, glorifying God for what he has done. If there's no other Anything else to our attention? Let's rise to our feet. The Father will give us a closing selection. Thy favor, thy favor, just to carry you through. Make no difference, makes no difference what the world, what the world may hold. What we have to do with it, what you trust.